everyone. I'm Ginger Balch from Sheep's Clothing, Yarn Shop in Torrington, welcoming you to another episode of Focus on Fiber. We are so lucky to have Pam Greshkin of Pam Greshkin Knits back to speak with us some more about her designs and her design process. Hi, Pam. Hi, Thanks Ginger. for coming back. Thank you. We had such a good time talking about how you design for Taki Magazine, yes. uh, or Taki, Taki Designs, um, and this time we're going to talk a little bit more about your your how you okay. design. Sure. And uh, I see that you have Vogue knitting. I do. To me, that is like wow, the pinnacle of designing when yes. you get into Vogue knitting. Yes. So let's take a look and see what you designed. Sure, sure. Um, Vogue knitting was actually the first um, publication I was in, and oh. yes, wow, <laughs> yes. Well, so it's this piece here. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that lace. And I came about this kind of from the back door. Okay. I took a class when um, Westport Yarns was Knitting Central with Shirley Payden, who is a, an extraordinary designer and teacher. Okay. And it was on how to design garments, where mm -hmm. you really paid attention to all the details that go into what makes a garment fit well, right. and the math. I don't think anyone realizes how much math goes into pattern you, writing. You change one little thing, and it affects it's the whole, ten other the whole things. Thing. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I took this class and with maybe four or five other people, and after the class, I hadn't finished the sweater. I had started it, but I hadn't finished the sweater, and Shirley called me and said, how do you feel about my taking your... Um, design proposal around to some of the magazines like Vogue Knitting and Interweave. Wow. I'm like, okay, oh, you yeah. Know, yeah. I'm not going to say no. Thank you. Right. And then I had to start knitting in earnest when I got a call from Vogue that, yes, in fact, they did want my design for their magazine. Wow. So then I had actually knit the sweater uh -huh. for myself so that I ran through the pattern okay. and then knit it in the yarn they chose, which was Blue Sky Fibers, Alpaca, and Silk. Okay. So I actually just thought of something that mm -hmm. I've always wondered about. You know how they have all different sizes? Yes. Do you have to write the pattern for all those sizes? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, um, my goodness. Math times how math many sizes? Math times how many sizes. Oh, that's, yes. that's why. I like, I like designing stuff, mm -hmm. but one time. <laughs> I right. don't want to do the math for a million yes. things. Well, wow. with, with um, Taki... They're content if I design the first three sizes, small, medium, large, and oh. then they'll have someone else that will do the math. But yes, you oh, have okay. to work out all the math for all the different sizes based on your schematic and all the different measurements. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of math. And, and that's why, I. and the thing is, I understand this, but I do get a lot of customers that come in and, and are upset mm -hmm. because there are errors in sure. the patterns. Yeah. And I... I understand that, mm -hmm. and that's why you go online now, and you can find the errata for, for the correction. That's right. For if the there's an error, you can find it. But I also say to them, but you have no idea how hard it is Correct. to write a pattern right. in the first place and get it right. Correct. And then, like you said, do all those different sizes. Right. Oh, my God. Right. And, and to get all that right. Yes. So how do you... Well, um, I... I'm blessed to work with a woman that is, sees math in her head. Oh. And um, Danny at the shop will tech, what's called tech edit okay. a pattern. So she will look at the sample and read it and check it for, check my math, check my grammar, check mm -hmm. the clarity of the words I'm using mm -hmm. and that everything is uniform and well laid out. That's another thing that's very difficult too is you go from one publication mm -hmm. to another publication, and now you have self-published things. Right. Everybody writes differently. Correct. And, I, I mean, I don't, I, I think at one time things were maybe a little more uniform. There were fewer publications, uh, I think. Well, exactly. There difference. you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, but everybody writes differently. Correct. Everybody reads it differently. Correct. It's very hard to write a pattern. And that's, you, very you hard. bring me to a good segue. Um, before it goes to Danny, I will have several people, when I have the time, if it's not a true deadline, right. tech knit it. And I will yeah. give that to my sister and another girlfriend who like to knit. They're excellent knitters, but they want it spelled out black and white. They don't want to intuit anything. Right, right. Whereas when I knit something, I will kind of decide what I think they mean, whether or not they mean it, and do it that way. They want to 
it spelled out exactly as it needs to be done with no room for gray area. So I will have them knit it, mm -hmm. and that way if they have questions and they say, well, what do you mean by this? Or, right. you know, I could do this this way or this way. And that helps me with the language to make sure it's clear. Right. Yeah. I also find that it's hard, too, when you're writing a pattern, you have to assume that the knitter almost knows nothing. Well, as it's, far a, it's as, a fine balance, though, because yeah. you don't want to insult a knitter. No, right. But you don't, so, you, so it's a hard balance. It depends on what level your knitters are at. Correct. Like shop patterns, I find I have to write everything out. Right. Or, or, or really say there's a really good glossary yes. for all the abbreviations Correct. and for things that you need to know. Correct. But in a shop, it's harder to say that, you know, um, I think everything really needs to be spelled out in the shop as yes. opposed to like a publication. Right. Well, often but, a publication will have its own reference materials. Right. right. Um, but I make sure to include any techniques, abbreviations. Mm -hmm. If I'm linking, I, you know, everything is there. I don't want somebody to be caught up short knitting one of my patterns. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a very... Yeah. It's hard to write a pattern. <laughs> it's, it's hard, but I tell you, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool to be published. Right. Right. Um, you know, as an aside, my father was um, a publisher and editor. So, oh my God, you've got to come so from all over the I place. Do. Mom, I that's do. a fashion designer. And that's true. Wow. So, for example, I'm in one of Iris Schreier's books, uh -huh. Iris of Art Yarns, and when I brought this book, you know, they want a copy of everything of that's course. published, of course. which is, you know, they don't put up on the refrigerator, but they want a copy of everything <laughs> that's published. Mm -hmm. And when my father looked through the book, um, now I'm going to forget the word that he told me. Oh, man. So, you know, I looked through it, and he said, this is really good quality paper. And, you know, oh, now I remember. Good. And this is my one of my designs in here. And he oh, said, and, and I said, yeah, and look, I'm on this inner page. He goes, that's the frontispiece. So I learned all kinds of publishing words I never would know. Uh -huh. um, and then he would go on to say, you know, the font and everything else. Right, um, right. So this is a second pattern that I've done in this book, and it's called Fallen Halo. Okay. And this is knit with two of Iris's yarns, her cashmere five and her um, cashmere glitter. Okay. Okay. And you can I see the glitter use from here. this one because you can kind of see the glitter right. a little bit better. Uh -huh. And it's a welting pattern, so it alternates with um, knit rows and pearl rows. Mm -hmm. And because it will sit as you can see, sorry, here, where it stacks, right. I wanted the glitter to show. Okay. Because So you want it so in that I wanted garter. the sparkle to right. be the outer mm -hmm. and but then you enjoy the feel of the other cashmere when it sits around your oh, neck. Oh, what is clever. Yeah. That's yeah. very clever. Um, That's and the other thing that writing these designing, you have to think of all these little things that you do. And you have to think about bringing the yarn out to its strengths. You know, right. I, I kind of, this may be corny, but I kind of think of if a, um, a ceramicist was looking at a, a chunk of clay and mm -hmm. figuring what the clay wanted to be when it grew up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, you know, look at yarns and try to see what would bring this yarn out to its best possibilities. Right. Okay. Right. So I've knit this for myself in, well, actually I have a third one at home, I have to admit, because I love <laughs> this cowl. Um, but customers in the shop that I teach each made one in the, the colors. And I was like, wow, I love that color. I need one in that color. Right, I need that in that right. color. So, you know, I have to feel it. of course. I have to feel it. Oh, course. my God. Yeah. It's like butter. Right. Silky, it's, yummy it's butter. It's amazing. Oh, you know? my goodness. And, wow. and people think cashmere, you have to earn knitting with cashmere, that you can't be a beginner knitter and knit with cashmere, that it's kind of like a rite of passage. And yeah, I have to say, no. get an easy pattern, knit with cashmere, you will not want to go back. Yes. Um, because it's just delightful. Why deny yourself the pleasure of working with a beautiful yarn? Just be... I say this it's all the a time. woman thing. Because you're because you're a beginner does not mean right. you have to have cheap yarn. <laughs> right. Right. Like we said before, life's too right. short to right. work with cheap yarn. Yep. So um, those are wonderful, two wonderful designs. And again, that started with, you know, I had to give Iris a design proposal. You know, uh -huh. she told me what the book was about, and I had now, to submit the design proposals. Okay. Now, so how did that come about? I mean, did you know she was writing a book? Did she? 
Um, we were acquaintances okay. um, from when I worked with Cynthia, and um, Iris's warehouse is in White Plains, so I've right. been to, I've been there, mm -hmm. and um, I think via Cynthia, Cynthia, and also having been in Vogue, she was aware that I designed, and I've actually been in two of Iris's books. One was Hats, okay. and one was Cal's Capelets and Wraps. Uh -huh. um, so it's a small, it's it's a small community. It's a fairly small community. That, uh, yeah, people know each other, and yeah, yeah. So, um, so those are some of the things that I've done that have been published elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I also started as a working in a yarn store, and you hear about what people kind of might be looking for. As you know, owning a yarn store, people will come in and say, I want a blah, blah, blah. And you hear enough requests and right. not able to find it for them. I like to fill those niches. So uh, one of my designs is called Simple and Easy Hat for the Whole Family. Oh. And um, it's just a basic, basic beanie. Uh -huh. uh, but I have it in three yarn weights, DK worsted and chunky, and five sizes from baby through like an adult male. What more can you want? Well, and is you that on your Ravelry? Bang for your, bang for your buck. Page yes, then? that's on my Ravelry okay. page. Mm -hmm. And um, it truly is a simple and easy pattern. Nice. Um, it's our go-to pattern in the shop when someone wants to knit a basic beanie. Right, right. Um, that led me to making one. The other thing people ask for is a, a newborn hat. Mm -hmm. So I just came out with a pattern called uh, Baby's First Hat, and this is done in sport, DK, and worsted. Uh -huh. And it's the basic beanie, again, just a little smaller. Right. You can do it with a pom-pom. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also just knit it in the round and make it flat, like a, we call it a teabag hat, oh. where you just knit it across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another way to kind of just fill that niche you know, of what people right. are looking for. It looks really yes. soft. Very That's a new soft, yarn from nice. um, Debbie Bliss called Baby Cash Merino Tonals. Very nice. And it's yeah, just it beautiful. Nice. It's, it has a nice spring to it, it does. too. It nice, yeah. nice give. Very pretty. And then this is uh, Plymouth Worsted Merino Superwash, which is one of my favorites. Okay. Um, I have actually washed it and dried it in the dryer, and it lives to tell about it. Yes, it does. So and what was the blue one? Uh, that's the simple, easy hat for the whole family. Oh, so it's the same shape. Of? Oh, that one is Zara from Taki. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I recognize that one. Yeah, okay. and that's another mm -hmm. really nice extra fine merino. Yeah, very so, pretty. Like I said, I like good yarns, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they're machine washable um, because people don't want, right. if you're knitting for babies or kids, they don't want non-machine washable. Right, right. So. And, and the super wash is a nice... <laughs> As a, po I mean, th there are s some nice little baby acrylics out there, yeah. but it, it's it is nice when you can have a superwash wool. Right. As, I I don't personally care to, to work with an acry a straight right. up acrylic. Right. Well, yarn snobs. It's okay. I, I, right. Right. <laughs> but I don't want to give them something that is going to end up being ruined the first time Correct. they wash it. So the Correct. super wash is just well ideal and, for that. And I kind of joke with people when they they say, "Can you put wool on a baby?" And I say, well, before there were synthetics, <laughs> you only had wool That's to put on had. a baby, you know. Right. And you know, I think of the Lion King. Although I'm mixing metaphors, you know, you hold that baby up, and it's there's wool. That's just what there was. Right. So. Yeah, so how they managed. <laughs> how they, that's how they managed. Um, so from being involved in these publications, again, working in the yarn store, I've done my own self-publications, self-published yes. patterns that uh -huh. are on Ravelry and available, of course, in our shop. Mm -hmm. And like the hat patterns, I like to fill a niche. Sometimes they are um, inspired by the yarn. Sometimes they're inspired, like I said, the shop and friends will say, can you make this? Um, and the first pattern I ever self-published came from a very outside, I don't know, long way around, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word. Um, my youngest daughter was in fifth grade. She was 10 years old, and she was a bit of a tomboy. And she would crochet in class. She oh. couldn't knit. I taught all my girls to, to knit because I felt it was my job as a knitter to teach them. Right. My oldest found it stressful. Um, she was nine at the time. Uh, my middle daughter, very capable, um, but gets bored easy. So she'll dust off her knitting needles, knit a gift, and put them away. But she yeah. knows how. You get excited, right, when they do that? Oh, my God, and you've got to act natural. You cannot, like, oh, you want to knit something? Oh, you want a bar needle? Sure. And, like, inside you're doing this incredible happy dance oh, yeah. because you're sitting with your child knitting. And um, At the beginning when my daughters, because I, I taught them both to yeah. crochet, and one... 
that didn't go too far. But then one daughter said that she wanted to crochet a blanket. That's yeah. always kind of like well, such a big project. Right. And I'm like, oh, I'm getting the yarn right. out and here the yarn, you know, and she's crocheting like, yeah. a, like a mad woman yeah. for like a week. Right. And then it gets put in the closet. It does. But and then you know, she we've takes done that again. I get all excited. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and I feel like I've done my, my job. You did it. <laughs> um, so she crocheted because when I taught her to knit, she knit so tight that in all my years teaching and working in the yarn store, I have never seen a person knit as tight as she did. It could have been armor oh, for wow. a breastplate in a war. And that's so uncomfortable to try to knit I don't that even tight. know how she did it. It was wow. that. I wish I saved it. It was that tight. Wow. So she crochets. Okay. Um, and she doesn't like to have a pattern. She likes to just kind of freeform when she does it, which is okay. fine. Yeah. So she's in fifth grade, and she is in school crocheting, and, you know, she's a tomboy, and one of the boys comes up to her and says, you know, can your mom knit? And she said, yeah, you know, all tough. And she goes, well, will she make me a sweater? She goes, I don't know, write her a letter. And, you know, all kind of like, you know, dissing him. And he did. He wrote me a letter. Oh, my God. And I, I tried to find it to bring it with me, but I couldn't. And it oh, said, so Dear Mrs. Cute. Greshkin, can you make me an ear flap hat with stripes this big? And he drew oh. the stripes. And he told me the colors. And sincere, sincerely, and his full name, all in script, I have to tell you, which they don't really now, do much of. But now all you in have cursive to do to that. Call it properly. Right, cursive. Cursive. Right. I had to make the hat. Of course. I had to make the hat. <laughs> and as I'm putting the finishing touches on his hat, I'm thinking, I can't give my daughter a hat for this young man and not have made one for her because you know how kids are. Yeah. So I whipped one up for her and so this is her cute little face Oh, oh. with her hat so that she had one when I gave it to the boy in her class. Oh, that's so sweet. So then when I knit it, first for him, then for her, and then one of his friends, another letter. <laughs> So after the third time of making this out, I'm like, maybe I'll write this down. It really? Yeah. You know, take some notes. So that, that one is called Flap Happy Hat. Oh, that's cute. And again, that's knit in five sizes and three yarn weights. So it's nice. And you can stripe it. You can knit it plain. I've played around with it. Here you can see I have different color ear flaps. Yeah, cute. You can braid the ties. You can mm -hmm. omit the ties. If I make it for a newborn, I omit the ties. Right. Um, you can do an eye cord for the ties. But that was my first truly self-published pattern, taking the long way around to right, it. Right, right. So, but I love that story, so, so no I wanted back to share. after that. Not really, not really. <laughs> so I brought with you a couple of things that I'm really excited about. Okay. Um, one of the things I love, and you probably do as well, is hand-painted yarns. Mm -hmm. They are just beautiful. The colors are rich. So many indie dyers, mm -hmm. inspirational. And we buy them like mad, and then we take them home, and we have no idea what we're going to do with them. Right. And, um, you know, we develop a little bit of stash, you know. Um, so I wanted to come up with patterns that can work for those variegated yarns to mm -hmm. fill that mm -hmm. niche. And so this one I did last year, and this is called Karma Chameleon, because oh. I like a good name. Uh -huh. It has to be fun. Uh -huh. And this yarn... Uh, was the inspiration for the pattern. This is Fiber Optics mm -hmm. Paint Box mm -hmm. Gradient Kit. And it is, I should have been more prepared, probably a dozen colors with just a few yards each. But her dyeing, if you, if you look close up, is so wonderful that you cannot really see exactly where right. one color leads off. Right. And what I did here is use slip stitches so it moves the color around. Right. So that kind of helped blur those transition points. Right. And it's done in the round. There are two sizes. So this one, uh, both of these are the long one because they're mine, but it can be made shorter mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So these are meant to wrap around the neck twice. Yep, there you go. Try this on. I won't put the gold towards my face because that doesn't look good. Well, you know, and it's really funny you mentioned the gold. Isn't that because pretty? But it's a great color. I mean, okay. you have to have so it the So this needs to be said. I am a purple person. My Love reputation it. precedes me. Mm -hmm. I do not like yellow. Yellow is probably my least favorite color. Mm -hmm. So oh, I'm going to take random dog hair. Oh, okay. Sorry. They come with okay, me wherever I go. Have. I have a German short hair pointer rescue and a golden doodle. Okay, that's so, a golden doodle. <laughs> serious. Yeah, the curl. So this, this yarn 
obviously runs the gamut between. It's like jewel yeah. tones or, or but autumn. But this wouldn't be so beautiful if it didn't have it the needs gold. that pop. But it needs it. So yeah. I started with this because I wanted to use these colors first, mm -hmm. and this one got short shrift, but it made it in there. So this yeah. I basically added it and then bound off. So you have the pop of color because it really needs it to make it special. Mm -hmm. But I didn't go heavy into it because I don't like right. that color. But you know, colors need to pop. Oh, absolutely. And I'm going to tell you a little, um, a little secret of mine. Um, Noro yarns. Mm -hmm. You know, beautiful color runs in them. Yes. They always have a color that I hate. Yeah. And so what I used to do is I, I would get the colors and I'd make what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I'd get to the color I hated and I would take it out. Right. But... I came to realize after a while, you need that color to make the other colors yeah. sing. We call it. So I don't do it and, anymore. And, I, and I, it's funny you use that word. I use the word sing, like when uh -huh. you just hit it right with a pattern or a design, it, it sings. And the other expression we use in the shop is a color that pops the shelf. Okay, so this pops the design, you know, right. it, it gives it that extra oomph. Mm -hmm. um, this is another gradient by Julie Azalin. I hope I pronounced her name right. And... This one is a little deeper, um, and you can see more of the transitions, but mm -hmm. I was just smitten with the color. Yeah, very pretty. And you can see that the pattern is reversible. Yes. Um, which is another people really like, is that when you wear, especially with these cowls that you can put on, and, oh, this is going to make feedback. I apologize oh, in advance. Oh, totally forgot about that. Um, <laughs> when you put it on and double it, you're oh, going to have... Oh, that looks. Look at that. Holding it below the mic. There you go. Um, you can see that you get right side and wrong side, right. and you want to make sure that they're both kind of pretty because, you know, who wants to sit there and arrange, you know, your cowl right. to make sure it's exactly right, right, you know. And then don't move. And then don't move, <laughs> which really isn't going to happen. So that one's called Karma Chameleon, and um, any gradient will do, it probably needs like at least 450 yards, uh -huh. but it's an easy thing to kind of tweak. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, I don't leave well enough alone, why should anybody else? Well, I kind of feel, when I find a pattern, I always, when I'm making something mm -hmm. and I find a pattern, there's always something that right. I have to change. First of all, because I did, it wasn't my design mm -hmm. and I'm doing somebody else's, so I have to tweak it. Right. Otherwise, well, well then I come up with the problem that when I do find the absolute perfect pattern, mm -hmm. that I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. I don't want to make it. <laughs> because I can't really? change anything. Because really? I can't change anything. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. It's too perfect. Okay. So I'm like, I'll let somebody else do it, and I'll admire okay. it, but I won't make it. No, I don't have that problem, but what I will do is, you know, as we learn and we continue to learn, no matter how many years we've been knitting, you'll find new techniques that I don't think many knitters realize you can exchange for other things. Right. You know, um, I knit Stephen West's Exploration Station, which was a tremendous um, learning curve, mm -hmm. and he did a beautiful um, tubular edge. Mm -hmm. which kind of just looks like piping. Right, right. And it's gorgeous, and mm -hmm. it makes me not want to ever do a garter edge again because it looks so finished. Right, right. So I will kind of, if I see a garter edge, I'll just kind of take out the garter edge and put in the tubular right, edge. So right. as a knitter, you can use these things that kind of go into your mental knitter's toolbox right, and change right, things up, right. which again goes back to not leaving well enough alone. Right, exactly. So... Um, I wanted well, to share. We actually not have a lot more time. This has been too much fun. Okay. So we're actually running a little short. So can here. I do so one more could, thing? You can do one more thing. Okay. So this All one right. here? So this one here. Okay. So this is another one again. Um, this is for wildly variegated yarns. Mm -hmm. It will work as well for more subtle variegated yarns like okay. the gray one on the table. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really good for the ones that you just are crazy and you say, I don't know what I will do with this, but I love it. Oh, okay. And there's lots of those yarns And there's out there. lots of those yarns. Mm -hmm. So um, I've, this pattern is going to be released um, within the next few weeks. And for your viewers, there will be a pattern call, code on Ravelry called Focus on Fiber for the Pattern Free. Woohoo! You heard so that. Okay. You heard it here first. Yes, okay. Um, so let me tell you that this is knit with Koigu okay. Painter's Palette Premium. Oh, I thought I recognized yep, this that is one are. skein. Okay. So yep. if you see that random one skein you love, perfect. You've okay. done. Great. This is knit with Periwinkle Yarns, which is an indie dyer. Um, it's an Aran weight, and again, it's a one skein project. Okay. Uh, which is nice because you want you know you want that yarn, but one skein. Okay. And then I have two from Miss Babs. This one Very is pretty. Yowza, which is just yeah. fun to say. Yes. <laughs> and this one is called Caroline. Uh -huh. And this color is called Perfectly Reckless, which I really felt 
fit the color uh -huh. and wanted to um, do something with it. Yes. Um, it is just kind of a carnival or a circus all rolled into one. Okay. Yes, yes, that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. Yeah. Very and nice. um, again, this is reversible uh -huh. and easy to knit. So well, I think that's we're that good. Is actually the perfect wrap up okay. for us then too. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks again. We had such a great time. We and did. You'll have to come back again to show us some of your to. new designs. Sure. Okay. But you definitely um, we, we need to get together. Okay. Uh, so anyway, what a great time I had with my guest Pam. Please be sure to look at her work on her website and her Ravelry page. You will not be disappointed. Um, I hope that Pam has inspired you as much as she has myself. Maybe you might want to give designing your own project to try sometime. If not, Pam sure has plenty of her own designs for you to choose from. Well, thanks again for spending time with us. And don't forget that it's always important to keep the focus on fiber. See you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.